All right, well, welcome back to the channel, everybody. If you're new, we live in rural North Florida, uh, where, as most country living goes, we get pretty spotty cell phone signal. Now, I do a YouTube channel, and we've started recently doing live streams, so upload speed has become critical. Problem is, it's very, very spotty. I'm losing on certain live streams, losing connection, buffering issues, and it's really affecting my ability to do this YouTube, which is critical because I have recently made a decision to pursue YouTube full-time. Uploading videos is also somewhere else I really need speed. Now, we do not have DSL available that I'm aware of. We currently live in a camper and have our shop here set up and we're developing the property. So I do everything off of cellular and hotspot. So that brings us to today's video. I am trying to figure out how to increase my cellular strength. And uh, if you've done like me and researched it, man, there's a lot of options out there and it can start driving you crazy. So long story short, upload speed is more critical to me than download speed. We're not necessarily worried about watching YouTube as much as we are producing it and uploading the videos and uploading live streams. So today we're gonna test download and upload speed with something that I bought. Uh, the two main types of ways to boost your signals out there, if you've done any research, is what's called MIMO, or a device that has multiple in and out antennas. Typically, that helps your download speeds, from the way I understand it, or cellular boosters like I got here, which sometimes does help your download speeds. We're going to test that, but what it really helps is the signal that you send back to the tower. It amplifies that greatly for your upload speeds. So very critical for me doing YouTube. So I decided to go with a WeBoost product. WeBoost, without a doubt, has the most reviews online and seems to be probably the best product that you can get for cellular boosters. Um, just, just a lot of reviews state that, uh, again, on Amazon and watching YouTube. So they just kind of seem to be the product to beat, so to speak. I was about to get the WeBoost home cellular uh, package that does all major carriers from Sprint to Verizon to AT&T. Uh, it was like $400, which is kind of a mid-grade one, but that was a lot of money to me. Then I stumbled across a new WeBoost Basic Home. It is only for AT&T and Verizon. We have Verizon here. Um, and I saved quite a bit of money. It was $250, $150 savings. So we're going to test this one out and see. Verizon's pretty much all we're ever going to have in this particular area. Uh, and, and we're going to see if the $150 savings was worth it and we get this signal boosted. I'm going to take this stuff out real quick. Unboxings are quite boring. I'm not going to sit here and show you every piece taken out. I'll just get it laid out on the table. We'll look over it. We'll install it, and we'll do a speed test before we hook it up and a speed test after to really see if we're getting our money's worth. All right, excuse the workbench, but uh, this looks pretty straightforward. So it comes with an inside antenna. A little coax flat cable so you can actually close this up into a window um, if you don't want to drill a hole through your wall so that's a nice little touch a bracket for mounting the antenna and a little coax adapter that allows you to hook two coax cables together that bracket mounts to the back outside antenna and this is directional and supposedly there's an app that we're gonna to have to download to figure out where our closest tower is although I can actually see it from the property You've got your actual inside uh, booster, I guess this is. You know, this is where you have your cable come in and cable go out to the inside antenna, a power supply. It comes with two, what I believe are 30 foot cables. So very straightforward. It's pretty much an outside antenna hooks to a box. Inside antenna hooks to the same box. And then you've got your cords to connect the stuff in between and a mounting bracket. So uh, very easy, they've got it all labeled step, you know, step one, step two. Uh, so this should be pretty straightforward and a very easy install. All right, so you might be wondering why I'm standing way out in the middle of the yard away from where I'll install this. And there's two reasons. One, I need to find the cell towers, even though I'm quite certain I know the closest one, but you never know, you need to test that. Two, I wanna get away from these metal buildings. That's where my signal is getting blocked and where I really need the signal is inside that building. So I want to get away and make sure there's no interference. I'm out in the middle of the yard. I know a cell tower is this direction. I'm pretty sure that's the one we're going to use. However, there's an app called OpenCell. You can download that on the market. Uh, it is actually suggested in the manual to get it. You turn on your location services, and right now it is uh, downloading and going to tell me where the nearest tower is by using GPS fixed on my location. 
And it's actually a good thing that I use this app because it turns out the tower that I am very much familiar with is apparently not a Verizon tower. It must be an AT&T tower. So I need to go the exact opposite direction that I thought. It's critical to figure that out before you start running and installing your wires because I was going to mount the antenna on this side of the building. Turns out it would do me no good because there are three towers near me. That's something else I did not know. One is this direction, one's this direction, and the closest one it's telling me to me is the exact opposite direction that I was thinking about going. So now I have to replan the way that I'm going to run my wire through that building and how I'm going to mount the antenna. All right, I've looked at all the different steps here. I'm not going to run it in the exact order it says, but the most important is it says do not connect this booster until, uh, you know, you don't, don't give it power until the entire system is fully hooked up and installed. So it looks like this would be your last hookup. So this is a bracket that it comes with. It will actually accept a U-bolt to clamp onto it. Um, and what I have decided I'm going to use is a rigid piece, very thick wall PVC pipe, and I'm going to make an antenna mast so I can spin it and get the direction that I need. So I'm going to take this bracket. It's already got holes on the back. It comes with a little pack of screws, and we're going to use this bracket. All right, then it comes with this bracket. As you can see, it's notched out. It's a clamp to basically go around a section of pipe. It looks like it'll fit many different size pipes. Now, if for some reason you needed to put your antenna at an angle, you could put the U-bolt here and pick different ones, but I know I'm gonna be perfectly flat and level. So I'm just gonna use these two right here. And if you're curious, it looks like it uses a 10 millimeter wrench. All right, so there it is. I just attached this L bracket to the back. The holes were already there, screws were provided. I've got my U-bolt mounting bracket that'll slide down over the pole now. I'll tighten that up once we get the pole installed, which is the next thing that I'll do. Then we'll start running coax inside. Um, the reason I wanna do it this way is to make sure that my antenna is going in a location that the cable will reach. If I start mounting everything inside and running the opposite direction, then that dictates to where I have to put my antenna. I'd rather start with the antenna to know that it is in the proper location, I'm getting clearance, and then I can always mount this somewhere else inside if I need to. It's much easier to move this than it is the antenna. I can just curl up the rest of the coax cable. So it turns out I have wooden drip edge on a separate building that I'm gonna run this over to. So I'm just gonna drill a couple holes through the PVC that I can screw this in to that wooden drip edge. So we're gonna try something here. I'm gonna mount the pole to this wood, but this ridge cap's in the way. So I'm gonna drill a hole through the ridge cap that I can stick the pole up through instead of just cutting and peeling it back. So let's see if this works. Before we get this too tight, we'll pull the app out. There's the open signal app. Turn my location on. All right, so what I did is I actually took the screws back out and run that wire through the pipe up out the top and zip tied it. That way I didn't bring the wire down the pipe and have it sitting on this tin, which could cut into it. So 
looks like everything's set. I've done double check the signal. Looks like I'm pointed the right direction. Hopefully this is far enough up above this metal roof. Now it's got a clear shot that direction. Make sure I put a grommet in since I went through the side of this metal. Once again, the last thing you want to do is fray up a coax wire. All right, perfect. Got to keep the wire off the metal, and I'll come back and caulk this hole in a little bit later. All right, so here is where we are going to do an unedited speed test. So as you can see, no lights are on. I've got it unplugged, it's just dangling right there. The only thing plugged in is my light up there. So let's start outside. This is typically where we do our live streams from, out here in front of the fire pit. Uh, you know, we do a country channel, so we, we typically have a fire lit and we do firewood on the channel. This is where I really need my live stream performance to improve. So if you can see up top, we have three bars and we do have LTE. So we don't have horrible speeds here. We just do not have good upload speeds at all. And inside that metal building, we actually drop calls. So let's run a speed test out here. <laughs> and that is actually, that is actually insanely high on download. Typically we are around one, sometimes 0.9, but there lies my problem upload two megabits a second that is pitiful that does not do anything for us as far as live streams or say if y'all are doing zoom conference calls or uh microsoft teams anything like that where you really need your upload speed or uploading videos so 16 download that is that is unusually high for us but it is uh you know middle of the day here in the afternoons when the system gets congested uh, we're, we're usually around one point something point nine it's horrible in download too. Um, upload is usually one point something too. That's pretty standard right there. Okay, we'll go in this room. This room is completely surrounded by metal. This is kind of our processing room with the sink and all. And let's see what happens. Typically I have no service in here, but it just dropped down to two bars. I don't know if you can see that. That's pretty good, but usually we always drop calls in here. A lot of times it goes completely to no service. I can't really stream music in here unless I stick my phone up in the window. This is a bad room. There's no way I could live stream in here. So let's see what the signal does in here. Download is still much higher than I'm used to, but it just may be the time of day. But as you can see, it's cut almost half from outside now that we're surrounded by metal walls. Now look at the upload. That is, that's pretty standard for us. 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.8 takes forever to do anything. This is That's why I cannot live stream in this room at all. So eight download, 0.6 upload, pitiful. So less than half of what was outside as far as upload goes. All right, the next area in my shop, excuse my mess, is this back corner. This is usually where I'm working a lot. Now, if I have my doors rolled up like I do right now, I can usually stream music here and answer a phone call, but it can get spotty. I definitely can't uh, upload here or live stream. So let's see what we have. Again, download is way better than I'm used to. And we're at two bars up top, by the way. Upload. I'm actually surprised we're hitting the three. Normally it's one point something back here in this corner, but three megabits a second is not good but that's some of the best I've seen. 
So let's go plug the unit in and see if it makes a difference. Now I think this is an omnidirectional antenna, but I do have it pointed this direction. All right, we are plugged in. We have two green bars, so that means everything is good. These metal shops are so common. I'm sure a lot of people have them. They're, they're efficient, quick to put up, and somewhat affordable, but they do kill your signal. So wow, look at that. We are now four bars that quick. It doubled my bars. So no doubt this would absolutely improve download, uh, your ability to talk, you know, not drop calls. So let's test. That's the real story. Download did improve some. From 11 to 13.4, I'll take it. But my goodness, look at the upload, y'all. That is insane. I have never in my life had to upload that high. Never, ever, ever. 19.9 upload. So we went from three in this corner to 19.9. That is uh, that is far more than I was ever, ever expecting. This thing really works. Let's go back outside. I think we had a two point something upload here. This is where I really needed to help. You can see we're about 15, 18 feet away from the antenna. So download still looks really good. Curious to see in highly congested hours if, uh, if that stays improved. And our upload whoop, is still going. Dramatically improved out here. So we went from a 2.5 to an 8.3. I'll test it again and see if I get just a couple feet closer. Sometimes we're right here. Download seems to be all over the place. Upload, oh yeah. So that's, uh, that's just crazy good for us. Crazy good. So from a 2.5 out here to a 17. No problems live streaming out here. Let's test the room. We'll give it just a second. We're still showing four bars in here. Remember it was two bars a minute ago. So it's look, looking like it's improving everything. Uh, again, should not have a problem with drop calls in this room anymore. And we're behind the antenna. I did not turn it. So it must be fully directional. Downloads really good for us, but upload still awesome. Absolutely awesome. Went up many, many times what it was. This is great. We'll actually be able to live stream in here. Excellent. This thing really works, y'all. It really works. All right, I just thought of another test that I wanted to check real quick, and that's uploading a video. So I've got uh, I've got this computer hooked to my phone. This is typically how I upload videos over mobile hotspot. And I'm going to upload a three gigabyte video. I have the booster unplugged. So it's just running straight off the phone, not boosted. And we're gonna get a time here in just a second to tell me how long it predicts, <clears throat> excuse me, to upload. All right. And hopefully y'all can see that two hours and 30 minutes is its prediction, which is actually pretty good. So it can take up to eight hours sometimes, um, especially when the network's congested for me to upload a video of this size. But two and a half hours, I've seen that quite a few times for a three gig video. So let's go plug the booster in live, unedited here. See, there is no green lights on the booster. And it is unplugged. All right, now we have two green lights. Let's go take a look over here. It takes it a minute to process. Wow, it's dropping already. Look at that. Just went from two hours, 30 minutes now, and down to an hour and 46. 
It's already up to 2% uploaded. Hour and 34, it's still dropping. Hour 26, it's already shaved an hour of upload off of that. All right, so I've been here about 30 seconds and it's already done uploaded 4% of the video. We're down now to an hour and nine minutes. It's still dropping, hour and seven. Looks like it's gonna upload this video in under an hour. That is, that may be slow for some of y'all with DSL, but for going over a hot spot, again, there's been a lot of times I've taken eight or nine hours to upload a video this size. It's still dropping. It, I really think it's gonna upload it in well, well less than an hour, which is just insane and life-changing for us. All right, y'all, it's been probably a minute, minute and a half. Um, wish I had got the time over here. Maybe y'all could see that. And it's went from two and a half hours to uh, telling me it's going to take to upload it to 58 minutes, and it's still dropping. I think it's going to get it down to 45 minutes or so on an upload, which is just just insane for us. I know that may not be fast to some of y'all with DSL, but out here in the country going over a hot spot, um, this, is, this is absolutely life-changing for us, especially with what we do for YouTube. Um, so worth the money. Wish I'd have done this a long time ago. Like I said, a three gig video in the past, I've had it take eight, nine hours before. That's not uncommon, but two and a half, three and a half hours, that's, that's a good day. This is still dropping down to 56 minutes, and it's only been running just a couple of minutes. So what can I say? It was absolutely worth the $250. Keep in mind, my upload speeds have just went up by leaps and bounds, an unreal amount. Uh, that may not be as important to y'all if you're not uploading videos or doing live streams, but that's critical to us for what we do. But don't forget, it did also help download. I know the download speeds only went up some looking at. They were already, for some odd reason, very good this morning. But don't forget, inside that room where I typically have no service, today it had a couple bars. It shot right to four bars as soon as I plugged this thing in. So no doubt it's going to help your download, your streaming, and definitely going to help your phone calls. Don't forget this model. This is the WeBoost Basic Home, not the WeBoost Home. It only works with Verizon and uh, AT&T that it said. If you have Sprint or a different carrier, you need to go with the regular WeBoost Home that has more bands. It does cost $400. This model's $250. We had Verizon. I wanted to try it. Um, it. There wasn't as many reviews out on this one. I think it's a newer model. So glad I tried it. The entire shop is now boosted in signal. Uploads are just the best I have ever seen. So I am thrilled, absolutely thrilled this product worked as well as it did. If you would like to support the channel, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If you'd like to purchase this product, we have an Amazon store down below. It's an affiliate link. We get a very small commission if you go and order this product on there. It does not cost you a dime extra and we get a small kickback. That allows us to buy these cameras, to make these videos and buy these products and do reviews on. So uh, we would really appreciate the support there. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you found this educational.